Indeed, Simon. Um, over to Jim. Um, okay. A very strong UK perspective there. Maybe we can balance that out with a little more insight on the US. Well, <clears throat> I'll try, but I'm not sure that it's going to be that much uh, balanced in faith, mm -hmm. certainly in favor of, of the United States when it comes to this, this issue. Uh, you know, uh, Henry Kissinger once um, uh, said in a fit of, um, of frustration, uh, if I want to call Europe, who do I call? Well, I suppose today we might say you could call the Commission. I'm not sure that would be you get too much of an answer there. But the quest that question certainly applies in the United States. If you want to know about who's running aid, who do you call? And there really isn't an answer to that because there isn't any one head that really has the has the uh, direction for it. Other than I suppose you could say the President of the United States, who has a few other responsibilities on his on his mind at this time and usually. Uh, we have 28 different agencies in the United States government that have a piece of foreign assistance, one piece of the other of foreign assistance, led primarily by the uh, U.S. Agency for International Development. I mean, it would be, I guess, your star, your premier, uh, has the largest amount, but barely actually the largest amount, certainly since the creation uh, in the last administration of two rather uh, striking new uh, initiatives by President Bush, the PEPFARs uh, for uh, AIDS Relief in Africa, the President's Emergency Program for AIDS Relief, uh, which has, uh, of course, brought uh, an enormous number of people in Africa uh, into um, antiretroviral drug treatment programs and has been uh, enormously successful and has just widely, huge, wide support uh, at home in the United States. And the second was the creation of the Millennium Challenge Corporation, which is a way of, of essentially delivering aid in a different way, more, if you will, more along the lines of, uh, uh, of DFID. That is, it's totally untied. It's not earmarked uh, at all. It's country-driven. It's built from the countryside up based on the programs that the countries come up with. Uh, and uh, it's multi-year. Uh, so it's... Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a different approach to aid. And the interesting thing is that the President of the United States felt it was necessary to create this kind of an organization rather than simply reconstitute aid, uh, USAID, which tells you something about the difficulty of making any kind of structural changes in the United States to any part of government, but certainly uh, in, the, in the aid uh, area where you have so many interests that have particular special interests that they want to protect that they are not willing to give up that uh, influence or that power. And so a president who wants a new initiative, as Bush did with PEPFARS and with uh, the MCC, simply has to add it on to that. And you add that on and you add the other work that is done by such agencies as the Centers for Disease Control uh, and increasingly now, I should throw, add, by the Defense Department. This is one of the real big questions, uh, is how much of this aid should be administered through the Defense Department. It's increasingly a large amount of our aid programs are being administered through, through defense. Now, in the, interestingly enough, if you go and talk to people in the Defense Department, they're not particularly happy with this. They don't particularly agree that this is what they should be doing and don't want to do it. And yet, in many cases, uh, they recognize if you're in uh, a particularly dicey part of Afghanistan, the only one that can get out in the field and on the ground to deliver this aid, may well be somebody that has uh, a jeep and a uniform and a gun and somebody with him uh, to go see the governor. Uh, so uh, it, it does require that kind of, of security. And that is one of the reasons why increasingly the uh, Defense Department has been doing this. I, I might also add that I think there's another reason the Defense Department has been doing it, because they are very efficient. Uh, they know they're on the ground. They know exactly what they're, they're talking every day to the commanders, to the com built community leaders. They know exactly what's needed there. And so they have this small amount of what they call walking around money, where they just basically hand out money for this little project or that little project. Not a lot of accountability, but it does certainly give you some idea of, of how the money is, is, gets, is where it's going. So we have these multiple agencies that are delivering assistance uh, in, in the United States. Uh, the, the, the real issue, it seems to me, that, we, that we're working with here is uh, that is not so much the challenge of knowing what is, is effective, but the, how, the challenge is how we implement all of this, how you do the implementation. 
And I think this report goes very much to the heart of that and the two different systems that you see in Britain with DFID and that you see in the United States with USAID and the other multiple numbers of, of agencies. Here, there clearly seems to be a national consensus that has been formed. There is no national consensus in the United States on, on what AIDS uh, objectives uh, should be. It was said, Simon said that, that it, his finding is that it runs uh, broad but not deep here in the, in, in the Parliament. I would say you could probably say the opposite in the United States. It's deep but not broad. Deep in the sense that you have individual legislators and groups that are committed very, very deeply to specific things like PEPFARs, who are champions of that and who will go to the end of the earth to be sure that the PEPFARs money is continued, but could care less about what's being done elsewhere uh, in the world with regard to education or, or uh, children's health care or whatever it might be. I shouldn't say care less, I don't mean it in the, quite that cavalier tone, but it, they're, they're, they're very focused. So you have specific sponsors, specific advocates for different programs in the United States, and that's why you see the proliferation of the, of the way the aid uh, is actually delivered, and the fact that it's delivered in 28 different agencies rather than in, than in one a single agency, because no one's willing to give up what they think is their program that is run more effectively from wherever it's being run, because they have some control over over how it's uh, uh, how, how it's happening. Uh, the the in, in the United States, we have really not. I mentioned the fact that we have 28 agencies and you've created these two very major ones in the last five or six years here, the PEPFARS and the Millennium Challenge Corporation. We have not had a reauthorization of the aid program uh, since 1985. That was the last time uh, the Development Assistance Act uh, was authorized. Uh, so there's been no comprehensive overhaul or look at it over the time and that is why you see this jerry-rigged system that has been built up with piece upon piece and no kind of, uh, no comprehensive way of, of, of looking at it or of defining it. Uh, there is an, a process that's underway now that's a little bit encouraging in the sense that uh, the, both committees in the House and the Senate have decided this is a priority. In the past, you have not had that. Uh, and so they've gone their merry way with different resolutions and doing different little things but never any kind of consensus on forming uh, 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 trying to re overhaul the, the, the aid system. Uh, the, in the House, uh, the, the con Congressman Berman, the chairman of the committee, decided he was not going to bite off more than he thought he could chew on. And so in his first take at it, it says basically it doesn't attempt to restructure uh, the whole, whole agencies, but it says simply that the president shall come up with a plan to do so and shall come up with a national strategy for development assistance, something which you have very clearly marked in the legislation here and is not in our legislation. But even that has been controversial uh, so far. And the controversy seems to be within the administration, because the administration yet hasn't figured out who's going to have the control of this. I think that is clearly the answer as to why, more than five months later, to my astonishment, you, you still do not have an administrator name mm -hmm. for U.S. Agency for International Development. I mean, it is, it is a, astonishing that you've gone five months without anybody heading up this agency, and it's still adrift with a, uh, basically a, a, an acting director uh, there. And I think the reason is very clear. You have, on the one hand, the State Department, led by Hillary Clinton, who says this is going to be in, under our control, and it's going to be over here in State Department. And I think you have people in the White House now with a new uh, national security advisor specifically for development we, uh, in Gail Smith who's saying, no, we want the reporting authority, administratively okay over there in the State Department, but the reporting authority and the policy direction here in the White House. And this has not yet been resolved. And until they resolve that, they're not going to get anybody to take the job of being USAID uh, administrator. Uh, so those are a few of the things that are, are at work I think in in uh, in the United States that are is making this a, a difficult process uh, to try and bring the kinds of coherence out of it that is that is needed. Let me just conclude with a statement that, having said all of that, not all is bad by in the way that is done in the United States. 
uh, you do get a lot of, you get advocates, a lot of strong advocates for different programs who push very hard for those programs. And if they're good programs, they will, they often will get funded and they will be, uh, they will be watched over, they'll be advocated for. You also have brought about the creation of some new directions uh, by doing it going outside the box and creating them as we did with the Millennium Challenge Corporation uh, and the PEPFARs, both of which have begun to develop their own constituency in Congress and outside uh, in support of it, particularly uh, the PEPFARs. The MCC is a different animal, and we can talk a little bit about why its difficulties, it has sp specific difficulties. But I think that you're, you're, you're seeing some of that. You also have very good accountability as a result of this in the sense that uh, different programs have, are very linear uh, and there is, a, there is a inspector general who looks at that program and reports on it and accounts for it. So there is that kind of accountability, which in a broader sense, when you have, don't have the mission, uh, when the mission is very broadly defined in all one agency, you may not have as good accountability for that. So there are some positive things about the system the way it is in the United States. But clearly, if we're going to make this work in a country like Afghanistan or any other country where we are working together, the United States has to have a clear objective about what its mission, not only what its mission is, but how it's going to deliver this kind of assistance if we're going to then forge the kinds of, of, uh, of relationships of cooperative relationships with the United Kingdom uh, and the rest of the NATO countries in a place like uh, like Afghanistan. With that, let me stop and see if we've gotten some stimulated some <laughs> thoughts and questions here. Absolutely, always. that's terrific. Thanks.